What's going on guys and gals? This is Auto Tech. So welcome back for another It's Gonna Be a Cold Morning Adventure. <laughs> We're heading out for a week-long bike trip. Uh, not the original trip that I wanted to take, but uh, you know, I had to come up with a backup plan and that's what we're gonna do But of course just like that last trip I took the morning here seems to be uh, quite cold and when we get to Canmore, which is uh, you know about 120 kilometers west It's about three degrees there right now. So what would that be? That'd be like 36 Fahrenheit. So it's, uh, it's gonna be one of those mornings so I'm hoping my voice isn't too muffled because I decided to throw one of those like face mask, neck guard things on because I was just like, oh man, that last time, you know, by lunchtime, I was, like, it was like to my bones, I was cold. <laughs> so my original trip that I wanted to do was uh, Hyder, Alaska, Stewart, BC, uh, which is kind of, it's like the Cheater, Alaska because it's the very like southeast edge of it. And, uh, you know, there's not even a border crossing to get into it because you just go through this, I think it's called the Salmon Pass or something, and then you're in Alaska, but you're not, but like that's it, there's nowhere else you can go. <laughs> uh, but then from there, I would have backtracked a little bit to um, a town called Prince Rupert, and then I would have ferried from Prince Rupert to uh, Port Hardy on Vancouver Island. But the problem is, is I, I tried to book that ferry uh, touch over three weeks ago now and they were fully booked up for this week so I was on the wait list and they couldn't tell me uh, you know where I was on the wait list so on uh, Thursday like two days ago or it might have been Wednesday night or something like that I canceled the wait list for that one just because I didn't want to you know like it was time to plan a backup trip so you know that's uh, that's what we're doing now so, and then I don't know if it uh, just happened to work out for the best because I was watching the news this morning. Uh, well, actually, no, it's Saturday, so the news wasn't on. But I was watching, like, the Weather Network, and, you know, they do, like, news stuff. Um, and uh, it's actually snowing up in, like, Stewart area right now, that, like, northwestern edge of B.C. So that's kind of... That's kind of weird. Uh, that's a touch early in the season, but uh, you know, it's not surprising, but it's kind of, I don't know, almost for the best, I guess, that we're not heading that way because, uh, you know, that would probably mean that they'd be snowing again tomorrow morning and then I would be in that. <laughs> so that would kind of suck. So what's in store for this trip? The backup trip. Uh, we're going to take the scenic route to Vancouver and then uh, we're going to... Uh, yeah, so, sorry, to elaborate a little bit further on that, the scenic route is, um, instead of cutting, like, southwest at Kamloops, like the way that I've always done, we're gonna go, uh, it's like a touch northwest, and then, uh, so that loops us through, like, Cache Creek, and then it joins up with the Sea to Sky Highway, and we're gonna take that into Vancouver. Uh, I've never actually done that highway, like, especially, like, the northern section, um, so that'll be pretty cool and then we jump on a ferry go to uh, Vancouver Island and then we're gonna spend I think it was what three three days I allotted myself in Vancouver Island and then I have booked myself a ferry on Thursday uh, to get from Vancouver Island to just north of Seattle and then uh, you know work our way home from there so uh, yeah it wasn't you know, I, I wanted to do that Hyder Alaska trip, but, uh, you know, just like with the not making the ferry, that didn't wait, work out all that great. So, I figured I've never really, I've never done the island. So, uh, you know, three days of touring the island should be pretty sweet, I hope. In the grand scheme of auto check trips, uh, this trip is going to be pretty tame, actually. Uh, the biggest day being, I think it's like 850 kilometers or something like that. So uh, it's definitely going to be a more relaxed pace kind of trip. 
um, or take in the scenery, enjoy it, uh, cruise around. I mean, a lot of the speed limits are going to be a lot lower. So, as you know, it's tough to cover ground, you know, because if the speed limit zone is 80 kilometers, 50 miles an hour, yeah, you could speed a little bit, but it's not like when you're on a major highway where you're already doing, you know, 70 miles an hour, 120 kilometers an hour kind of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's tough to cover ground when it's like that, but whatever. I mean, we got time. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on until I get to above Canmore Banff area. So I'm going to check in with you guys, uh, you know, like once we're getting a good dent into the, the trip here, you know, an hour and a bit or so. So I will talk to you guys shortly. So I'd say I'm about uh, two-thirds of the way to Canmore right now. It probably won't show up. Let me see if I can lean right in there. If you look right there, that should say zero degrees <laughs> Celsius. Uh, and then up here this morning here is uh, ice maybe present warning that turns on at four degrees Celsius So that doesn't really count because most mornings in the uh, you know beginning and ending seasons I get that warning anyways But I was just cruising along and I was just like Looking around I was like oh yeah, yeah things are looking good And then I noticed that it's like showing like zero degrees and I was like whoa boy I haven't seen that temperature since my last trip. <laughs> since that last trip, though, uh, I've actually upgraded some of my, uh, like, under gear, or whatever you want to call it. Um, the hoodie I used to wear under this jacket uh, wasn't that good. Like, it, it wasn't that warm, and then it, like, made the, the arms super bulky, and it, like, stuck out past the bottom of the jacket a bunch and then it like came up above my neck a bunch so when it rained like the hoodie got soaked so that thing was kind of useless uh, I found this sweater that like fits perfectly under the jacket like it like ends before the end of the cuffs it ends before the bottom of the jacket and then when I fold the collar down it's below the top of the jacket so anytime that it's raining uh, the sweater underneath doesn't get wet so that's actually pretty perfect um, I was talking with a buddy at work and uh, we kind of thought about it we were like you know those old man fleece sweaters would actually be perfect because you know a lot of them you know the ones I'm talking about uh, a lot of them you know the if, you, if it gets wet it's still warm that's one of the things about fleece and uh, you know that's why a lot of people who hike and stuff like that wear it so I started looking at um, like hiking gear and that's how I ended up finding this sweater uh, it was made by a company called Woods uh, and I bought it at Sport Check so it's uh, you know it looks nice and hipster but uh, underneath the jacket it works just fine and uh, you know nobody has to know what it is except everybody who watches this video will know I'm wearing like a hipster hiking sweater under my jacket. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you guys this. Uh, kind of some low, low hanging clouds and stuff this morning. So that kind of looks cool. I was coming around the bend and uh, I just like, it, like it looked like a fog almost. So I don't know what that is. That's, that's weird. Um, yeah, it's, well, it's probably just because of the cold air. So it's, you know, creating like a fog type situation. Like, you know, I've been seeing that the sides of the roads are wet. So I'm guessing it stopped raining like early this morning or something. I don't know. Hopefully it shows up on the camera and looks just as cool as it does, uh, you know, like to me through through the visor. So you know, I'm hoping this shows up here. The, the mist or fog, low clouds, whatever you want to call it, over top of the lake. That's pretty cool. Right on. And again, kids. That's why you get out of bed before 10 o'clock. Because right now it's, you know, barely after 7. And uh, you get to see some good stuff in the mountains there. <laughs> yeah, this fog is leaving some, uh, like, moisture on my windshield. And it's going on my mirrors and stuff. So that's kind of weird. Oh, well. Uh, just pulled in Camor now. Uh, I'm just going to top up my fuel because I can. And I'm going to have a small coffee. Because it's not very warm out. <laughs> So I just had some guy at the gas station here. Uh, he was a 
emergency response guy or something like that, so kind of like a paramedic, sort of. And you said that uh, there was snow here this morning, like at like 2.50 in the morning or something like that? Like, that's... Why? Why, Canada? Why? Like, I don't know if I want to be friends anymore. So I guess that explains why the sides of the roads are wet is because there was snow on the sides of the roads. So, cool. Isn't that awesome? But not really. All right, back to it. Uh, now we're gonna be heading into the national park and making our way up into the mountains. Hoping it warms up soon because uh, I actually got like colder on that stop because then I wasn't wearing the uh, gloves and the helmet. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what game it is that the cops are trying to play, but pretty well every single one of these intersections I keep coming up to, they drop the speed limit down in half to 50 kilometers an hour. And there's no construction, no nothing. Like they're just, they're just dropping the speed. And then it picks back up again. So it's like, I got a feeling these cops are doing this just because then people won't slow down and then boom, it's an easy like 40 over ticket. Because, you know, never mind all the shootings that have been going on in Calgary and the fact that we're on track for the highest murder record we've ever had, better write some tickets for some speeding at window tint and stuff. Good job, officers. This, uh, this stop was one of the places that we pulled in to uh, have a smoke on our way to that bachelor party. Um, I didn't, I don't think I recorded from this point or like at this spot here. So I just thought I would show it to you guys because it's, uh, it's good scenery actually. Um, well, it appears we're not alone. Looks like someone was docking last night, or dry docking, whatever you want to call it, where they camp, where they're not supposed to, but not a big deal. So, yeah, definitely uh, feel free to check that out. Got the mountain, the sun, and the river. The river's not as blue today, probably just because of all the rainfall, so it got a lot of mud in it, but, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Someday, I would really like to come into Golden here with nobody on this road. I bet you this road would be pretty fun if you could do whatever you wanted. Now, the speed limit is actually 80 kilometers an hour. So, with how tight some of these turns are, it would actually be a pretty sweet time because even at 80 kilometers an hour, you'd be, you know, leaning a little bit. And then, you know, if you were to theoretically speed just a touch, it would be excellent. Um, I don't see any trailers and I don't see any semi trucks up ahead so there is really zero excuse for us to be doing 70 through the turns or at some points there 45. Ugh, that sucks. Alright, rolling into Golden now. Uh, I think this marks like the one third point of today. I'd have to double check a map. It might be just a touch past the one third mark. but. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna grab a coffee here. My fuel's really fine, so I was planning to have lunch in Revelstoke, which is the next major stop, and we go through Rogers Pass to get to, uh, Revelstoke. So, uh, yeah, that's a good point to top up the old caffeine and nicotine levels. Oh, man, I haven't said that in so long. That's like cross-Canada trip days where I was like, Oh, caffeine and nicotine and, uh, you know, swearing all the time. And, yeah, those were the good days, the glory days. <laughs> it just would not be a ride through the mountains without some sort of construction or delay. Uh, I just wouldn't expect any less. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping uh, the construction that's going on between, I think it was Revelstoke and Salmon Arm, is sorted out because when I went through there coming back from Vancouver in June um, I got held up like two hours because they were closing down the lane and then you had to sit there and wait uh, so I'm hoping that's not the case today 
and uh, if it is I'm not just gonna sit in traffic like last time I'm just gonna ride the shoulder up to the front because uh, that was that was ridiculous like sitting there on the highway in 30 degree heat um, we're wearing gear you know like the, the screw these people that are sitting in their AC vehicles luckily we're not gonna see any temperatures like that uh, this trip but uh, even still you know 22 degrees sitting in the sun not moving but it gets pretty warm ladies and gentlemen please make sure your seats are in the upright position and that all your trays are in their proper place and the electronics are turned off we are now starting our ascent into Rogers Pass and uh, yeah that's about it that's the end of that joke <laughs> These snowshed tunnel things are always so cool. Uh, their their purpose is actually for avalanches, so that the avalanche just goes straight over the top, off the side of the mountain, doesn't block the road. Uh, so I'm guessing that there was a bunch of avalanches like in these certain areas, and that's why they built them in the locations that they did. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they're just always cool. I miss the Harley for going through here though, because this thing, yeah, it's just not the same. You roll on the throttle, it just, it's just, it just, you know, it says like T and crumpets as it's going down, going along here. It's not like America, freedom, eagles coming out of the tailpipe, yeah, loud, V twin. <laughs> On an off-topic note, though, I was on the Akropovich website the other night, and uh, I listened to the sound clip of their slip-on on this thing, and uh, that actually sounds pretty good, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I've been torn about putting an exhaust on this bike. You know, I, I like it, and most of the bikes I've owned have had an exhaust, and then the same deal with uh, a lot of the trucks I've owned I've put exhaust and stuff on them but it's like I don't want to lose any of the fuel mileage that this bike has and I don't want to drone my right ear out uh, the Harley was pretty bad for that uh, after like a solid 10-12 hour day you get a ringing in your right ear and uh, I refuse to wear earplugs while I'm riding like screw that alright we are pulling into uh, Revelstoke. I kind of went a little bit too long between stops there, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable. But that is okay, because uh, we're going to stop now and, uh, yeah, find something for lunch. Okay, back to it. I was uh, giving the map a quick flip. Uh, we are just a touch past the halfway point. Halfway point. Uh, yeah, so, back to it. That place, like, really tested my patience in there for some reason. Um, the waitress just, like, never came back. Like, she, like, dropped off my food, and then it was, like, I was done eating, and then it was, like, 15 minutes after I was done eating before she came back to get me, get me the bill. I was getting ready just to get up and, uh, like, go to the front desk and just, you know, because I, I got other stuff I want to do. Like, I'm not just hanging out in there and, uh, eh, whatever, I guess. We're done. We're on the way. <laughs> I guess I don't actually have to be anywhere important today or anything, so I got time. I just got to relax. So I want to show this to you guys. It's called uh, Three Valley Gap. Um... If you're familiar with the area, it's uh, just after Revelstoke, and then it's just before the thing called Enchanted Forest. Uh, it's just, it, I just always find this thing like cool because it's just you know it's got like that red roof, you know, it's got like that chalet type look to it. And then uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a look at her here, you know. And then if you actually rent, so hopefully that shows up, you get this view of uh, the lake. So I mean that's kind of cool. I've never actually stayed there and I've never actually pulled in, but uh, every time I drive by I'm always just like, man that's cool, and this time I made sure to show you guys. <laughs> Houseboat capital of the world, Segaboos. 
never actually turned in here. Yeah, it's like an information kiosk or something. Or it's a restaurant or... I don't know. Oh, hooked decor and whatnots. Oh, so it's like a store. Well, that's not very exciting. Here, I thought I'd have something cool to show you guys. <laughs> Check out that train bridge through the trees. That's kind of cool. I stopped here to uh, drop the sweater into the old saddlebag because it's starting to get pretty warm. Uh, not too bad to the point where I have to like open vents or anything, but uh, definitely warm enough that uh, you don't need thicker gloves or uh, you know a sweater on. That's for sure. That is definitely much more comfortable. <laughs> now I can kind of feel the breeze a little bit. It's, uh, I don't know, it happens like all the time. I've brought it up in probably dozens of videos now where it's like riding in Canada, especially the mountains, you're going to come across like a 30 degree swing in temperature as your day progresses. <laughs> You know, we had zero degrees this morning, now it's 21 degrees, and I think Cash Creek or whatever is supposed to be like 27, so like that's pretty well a 30 degree Celsius like change from the time I started riding <laughs> to the time I ended. So if you guys want to see an extremely overrated city and overpriced, just take a look straight in front of me. This is called Salmon Arm. I think this place is a is a hole. Like it's terrible. I hate this place. It, you know, and, it, and it's just it's so expensive. I've I had one time. No, I've had twice now, where I uh, got you know kind of caught. I didn't have you know quite enough daylight left to make it any further. So you know, like a, a run of the mill garbage motel here is like a hundred and eighty dollars. Like it was just highway robbery because they think that there's like some beach or something here I don't know but it's just oh man and it's it's just expensive and then uh, it always takes forever to get across this city because the lights are poorly set up and it drives me nuts <laughs> and that was neutral great glad I found it so you know uh, if you watched I think it was the last video um, I talked about uh, the passing zone drag races or whatever, you know, you know, we need, we, we need to come up with an official name for that, you know, like when you get to those passing zones and suddenly everybody's Dominic Toretto from Fast and the Furious, they, they do the speed limit, if not five under, everywhere else, but then as soon as there's two lanes, they feel comfortable doing like 40 over the speed limit trying to think of a cool name for that you guys could help too like I, I I think like passing zone drag races is almost you know or like for formula passing zone passing zone formula one Gran Turismo passing zone I don't know if you got a good idea for something like that throw it in the comments below and we're gonna start using that when it comes to this type of stuff because I've been certainly dealing with that a lot today where people are doing five under the speed limit or bang on the speed limit and then suddenly we get to these passing zones and it's like I can barely outrun them they're speeding so much and uh, you know that, that makes you uncomfortable right because you know I'm gonna get nailed doing like substantially over the speed limit because that guy's being a dickhead that's not cool looks almost like we could hit some uh, moisture before we reach our destination, things could get moist. I don't know what people's deal is with that word. I think it's just trendy to say you don't like that word. Because I can't think of a single word in the English language that uh, I hear it and I'm just like, Ugh, other than work. That one kind of makes me go, Ugh. I'm glad I had all my vents closed. <laughs> Because, yes, indeed, we did find rain. Uh, we're almost at Kamloops now. Uh, Kamloops would probably be the fourth 
four fifths mark or the eight tenths. <laughs> so we're uh, really not that far from the end of the day. Um, yeah, just, you know, hopefully it's not raining for the remaining couple of hours, but you know, even if it is, it's not the end of the world. I do have to pay attention though uh, here in Kamloops because this is where my turn to like go north is uh, or northwest whatever usually when I'm going to Vancouver uh, I take number five which kind of goes southwest so I think this road just kind of like just turns into number five so I don't off the top of my head I don't remember, remember ever taking like any exits uh, so I'll have to pay attention and make sure I catch the right one. I kind of feel like it is Highway 1. E either way, there should be something that says like Cash Creek or something like that. Hopefully. <laughs> so just as I predicted, I took the wrong exit. My exit is way up there. Probably won't show up in the camera, but yep, that's the one I was supposed to take. So, you know, luckily only went a little bit in the wrong direction. We'll get this sorted. Alright, Cash Creek. Okay, so there should be one more exit after this. <laughs> okay, Cash Creek. Alright, we keep going on this one. I'm pretty sure there's an exit. I just don't know exactly where it's going to be. I guess that was my bad. He did have his signal light on. <laughs> I guess nobody's letting him uh, get, in the, get in the right lane. And he is trying to do the right thing. So <laughs> he's trying to move over. Oh well. Whatever. Crisis averted. But uh, yeah, okay. So that's yeah, like there's like three highways on this one highway. Like it's kind of a, kind of a mess. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get her figured out here. <laughs> So I was right in the first place where this highway just kind of turned into number five and started going south. So I do have to exit off to maintain uh, the Trans Canada, which then kind of goes a slight northwest. So yes, I have to take this exit because I want that 99 south um, eventually, which is the Sea to Sky Highway. So I have to take this all the way to Cache Creek and then like. A little bit further away is 99 and then it starts going south again and that's when it goes through uh, like Whistler and Squamish and stuff like that so that's that's what threw me off here was just I've never actually taken this way so I thought when I saw that north exit I was like oh yeah that's the one so I took I think it was what 95 north but I actually needed uh, 70 or no 97 north yeah so there we go. We're we're on track. Good to go. Uh, the problem I didn't purposely pick like Cash Creek as a stopping point because if you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I typically like to do about 800 to 1,000 kilometers per day, and that's like my happy spot uh, around that 600 mile mark. You know, 500 to 600 miles. Uh, whereas this is only going to be. Uh, I don't, I don't know, like 700 and something kilometers, and I'll be done like before dinner time. But the problem is, is after that, there's like nowhere until Whistler, and then the problem with Whistler would be, uh, it's like $300 a night, and then if I make it to Whistler, I might as well just push on another like two hours to Vancouver. So that's my thought process behind it. <laughs> Yes, so far this definitely is the scenic route. Uh, so that's kind of cool and uh, I've been lucky so far and I'm about to jinx myself, but I'm not coming across too much traffic going my way. So that kind of makes it sweet. And now that I've said that, so I'm gonna come around this bend and it's gonna be 55 long motorhomes. <laughs> you know, and the reason I say that many is because how the hell do you pass that at a single passing lane. You don't. <laughs> so that would pretty well ruin the remainder of the trip. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah. But no, the, the actual view. 
that's pretty sweet. So this highway kind of comes down and just basically follows the river, I suppose. That's kind of cool. You know what I've been noticing though? I've been kind of watching out of the corner of my eye because I thought it would be super cool to do it. But uh, I've been seeing like some tracks that are down like by the water. And like when I was coming down the mountainside there, there were some really good lookouts. But if you notice uh, just ever so slightly there, there are like barbed wire fences and whatnot because people own the land there. So there's no way to actually get to it without, you know, going to that farmer's house and, uh, you know, get, like asking permission or whatever. Because I saw this one, it was like, you know, it, I would have been right on the spine of a hill, but then I would have had such a good look out of the river. But I, I went to take the turn and then I noticed it was gated and I was like, crap, like that sucks. That would have been super cool for photos for the Instagram. <laughs> All right, guys, I turned around because I saw something, and I don't think that there's a gate. So I think we can go in and check this out. Yeah, Dead Man Junction Ranch at the Wild, Le Wild West, yeah. Oh, man, here it is. Fuck. All right, luckily there's nobody behind me. Just for the record, I did look in my mirror. <laughs> Ghost Town open daily. All right, what do we got here? Oh, shit, this is so cool. No parking. All right. Sorry, no pets. Nice. And it kind of looks like it's cold. Oh, admission five bucks. Under 12 free. Well, that's, yeah, no, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> okay, well, I'm over it. I guess I got to show you guys something kind of cool-ish, sort of. I guess we'll stand up right out of here. Might as well. I kind of wanted to go up there, too, but I see a keep out sign. <laughs> so, right on. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Huh. I did not pay five bucks to go in there. I'm sorry, guys. I got the cash in my pocket, but that's not happening. <laughs> Private property, no trespassing. The gate's open. Oh man, that'd make for a really cool spot. God, I'm starting to understand that song now. Signs, signs everywhere, signs. Blocking up the scenery. Jesus, now I'm gonna have a copyright strike. <laughs> uh, kinda, I kinda want to. Like, I'm not gonna hurt anything. Uh, no, I don't need to. Knowing my luck, some douchebag or CMP officer would be rolling by just as I'm like taking a photo or something and then he'd be like oh hey here's a $500 trespassing fine you shall not pass go <laughs> check that view out that's kind of cool a little bit of the river off into the distance there got the valleys we're uh oh boy we're only like 10 minutes from Cash Creek so today is coming to a close pretty soon here I know, yeah, yeah, that's okay, I'm, I have mixed feelings. It would be nice to have like a chill evening because then I could just do nothing, I guess, because I don't know what to do there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then, it, you know, because sometimes I hate like rolling in at like 11 o'clock at night too, and then it's like you unload the bike, shower, go straight to bed, and then I'm back up at like 5 in the morning and I'm back on the road. It, that's not always fun either. Gotta, gotta find that happy medium. All right there, boys and gals. Guys, guys and gals. We are in Cash Creek now. Just want to find a gas station or something. Uh, yeah, 97 North is what I want. Yeah, I'm going to find a gas station, uh, top up my fuel, and then I'm going to find a place to stay. Looks like there's no shortage of that. Uh, several little motels around. So that's kind of perfect, actually. Right on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought there because I was looking around. But uh, you know what? I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this day one video. Um, you know, because I enjoyed showing it to you. It was a nice chill day, so that's kind of a change of pace. 
Um, you know, if you've been with me for a while, you know we usually uh, do some pretty big miles, but uh, today was slack, so that's kind of cool. I like it. Ooh, 94 octane, nice. Or as uh, Blockhead says, 94 dead dinosaurs. Hmm, seems I have found friends. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hit up this Herbie's drive-in, home of the famous Monster Burger. So that'll be the end of this evening once I find a place to book in. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new to this. And as always, thank you for taking the time and watching.